Our next topic for this chapter is oxidation and reduction. It's a new category of um, reaction type. And basically the point of oxidation reduction is it's a way to describe the movement of electrons from one species to another, or one from one element to another. Okay, so if we have a reaction of calcium, solid calcium plus oxygen, will give us calcium oxide. Okay. And hopefully your brain goes, hey, wait, that's also a combustion reaction. Well, quite a few reactions fall into multiple um, reaction categories at the same time. So combustion reactions can often be also oxidation reduction reactions. Or sometimes we'll refer to these uh, more simply as redox. Okay, reduction oxidation reactions. Right, so the way this works, so if I do um, some, uh, some Lewis dots for this reaction, I'll have a calcium plus an oxygen, and we're just using dots to show the outside electrons. And because we've got two right, the result is that we have Calcium gives up both of its valence electrons, and the oxygen picks up both of those valence electrons. So the calcium becomes a 2 plus, and the oxygens become 2 minuses. Right, so calcium loses electrons. And oxygen gains electrons. Okay, so oxidation as a term is loss of electrons. And reduction, counterintuitively, is gaining of electrons. Right, so I learned, so the way that I learned to um, remember which was which, O-I-L and R-I-G, oil rig. Okay, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. All right, so the way that we can go about sort of numerating this is with um, what we call oxidation numbers. Right, and oxidation numbers is sort of electron bookkeeping. Right, and there are rules. Okay, the rules for assigning oxidation numbers. So, monatomic ions the oxidation number is the charge. Right? So, for example, if I have Na+, its oxidation number is plus 1. Or O2 minus, its oxidation number is minus 2. So monatomic, in other words, a single atom, 
monatomic ions, their oxidation number is the same as their charge. Let's see. The next rule is that an atom in elemental form atoms or, let's say, elements or molecules and that will become clear here in a minute. In elemental form, in elemental form, oxidation number is zero. Okay, and examples of this, if I had just carbon solid, oxidation number is zero. If I have chlorine gas, that's its naturally occurring state, okay? Oxidation number is zero. So when you say atoms or elements in elemental form, we can also refer to that as their natural, naturally occurring state. Okay, oxygen gas, O2 gas, is also a zero. Alkali metals. Their ox number, oxidation number is plus one. Always. Oxygen. Is usually minus two. Hydrogen is usually plus one. Exceptions to that are very few. Okay, so for example, in hydrogen peroxide, oxygen will be a minus one. That is the only exception to oxygen being a minus two. Every other time you see oxygen, it will be a minus two. But if you find oxygen in hydrogen peroxide, it's a minus one. Exceptions to um, hydrogen being a plus one are when we have metal hydrides. Okay, so when oxygen or with, when hydrogen is with a metal, it's going to be a minus charge. So um, sodium hydride will be a minus one. All other times, hydrogen will be a plus one. Let's see, halogens. are usually minus one. And the last rule is that the sum of oxidation numbers in a compound, in a neutral compound, is zero. And going along with that, the sum of oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion is the charge of the ion. Okay, so Sounds like a lot of rules, but really they, they sort of make sense when you go through them. The thing that's important to remember is that oxidation numbers are not the same as charge. They will often have the same um, sign and number value, but they're not the same as charge, okay? And we're gonna look at an example here right now um, where that is the case. 
Okay, so let's look at an, a reaction. So if I have H2S, or let's not necessarily look at a reaction yet, but let's just assign oxidation numbers for sulfur. Okay, and we're gonna look at a few different compounds. Right, so H2S is our first example. So hydrogen is plus one. So plus one, plus one, because I have two atoms of hydrogen. So the oxidation number applies to each atom. So if I have plus one, plus one, and I need to end up with a sum of zero, then sulfur has to be a minus two. Okay, and so you may be looking at that saying, okay, well, that's the same as what sulfur's ion charge would be. All right, fair enough. Next example, sulfur dichloride. All right, halogens are minus ones. And I have two atoms of chlorine, so each chlorine is a minus one. Minus one, minus one. So that means that the oxidation state of, or the oxidation number of sulfur has to be a plus two. So here's an example of where the oxidation number is different from the ion charge. Now our third example will be with sulfur again, but we've got a bit more going on. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the things that we know. So oxygen is almost always a minus two. Alkali metals are always plus ones. So each atom gets that oxidation state. So minus two, minus two, minus two, plus one, plus one. So I've got a total of minus six from all of the oxygens and a total of plus two from the sodiums. So that means that sulfur by itself needs to be a plus four. So we're going to go ahead and stop this video, and then we will pick up on our next video with doing things within uh, complete reactions.